Hello, today I'm going to work on making a bit crusher based on the Auto Biscuit, uh, which is a device that came out a few years ago and was pretty popular. Um, so I'm going to be using Core and some bit operators to do most of the heavy lifting in today's tutorial. If you're not familiar with uh, bit operators, I've written a companion tutorial to go along with this video uh, that explains bit operators and integers and how they work. So if you don't understand what I'm talking about, it might be a good idea to have a look at that. So the Auto Biscuit is a device that takes an incoming audio signal and converts it to 8 bits and then allows you to turn individual bits on and off. So for example, you could turn bits 4 and 5 off. And then what that does is creates a kind of crazy distortion, very similar to a bit crusher. Um, and then after that, you can even invert any of the bits. So if it's off, you turn it on. If it's on, you turn it off. And um, that gives you a similar but different type of distortion as well. And so I'm going to show you how to do each of those today. The first thing I'm going to do is build a 8-bit integer out of buttons in primary. Um, and each of these buttons is going to have an on value that is a power of 2. So it's going to go 1, 2, 4, 8 and keep doubling all the way up to uh, 128 and then by adding those numbers together uh, we'll actually be able to construct any number between 0 and 255 um, which is the size limit of an 8-bit integer so in just a moment I'll show you how that works add all these together so each one of these buttons represents a single bit within our 8-bit integer and when we return to the panel we're gonna have to rearrange everything as usual and then I'll show you real quick how we can um, use these to count upwards towards 255. Um, I'll just show you the first couple of uh, numbers here. So make one like that, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So hopefully you get the idea that you can build um, any integer using a collection of powers of 2 like this and that's how uh, integers work in computers um, so we can actually hold all of those um, buttons together in which we can add them all together into one number and still individually know uh, which of these eight buttons are on and which ones are off and we use bit operations to do that, and I'll show you how that works in just a second. <clears throat> so we're going to take audio into a core cell here. And we're going to have the audio out uh, go to the output of the instrument. Let's do that real quick. And make sure you set the core cell to mono. And inside, the first thing I want to do is translate the audio signal into an 8-bit signal. And I'm going to uh, first take the sign of it and the absolute value. And I'm going to multiply the absolute value um, but by 255. And when I round this off, it should give us a number um, between 0 and 255, uh, just like our 8-bit number should have. And I'm going to do an operation called bit and um, against the number that we created out of buttons just a few minutes ago. Um, 
And what that's going to do is it's only going to allow the uh, buttons that we have on. It's only going to allow those numbers through um, the bit and, and it's going to turn off any bit that uh, has its button turned off. And then we're going to take the output of that, um, divide it back by 255 again to give us a signal between uh, 0 and 1, and then we'll multiply it uh, by the sign that we took at the beginning. Now the sign is also a bit um, that technically makes this a 9-bit signal actually, um, but this is just a short tutorial so I'm not really going to deal with that. It's uh, not that big of a deal as you'll see in a minute. We can still make some pretty crushing sounds with uh, this just the way it is. Okay, so it's pretty awesome uh, how much of the sound you actually can get even when you only have one or two of the bits turned on. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is show how we can invert the bits um, right after we're done turning them on or off. And so I'm going to duplicate our buttons and create another input to our uh, core cell here. And we're going to use another bit operation called the uh, XOR, uh, either or. Um, and we're simply just going to uh, XOR the output of the bit AND against the uh, new number that we're creating out of the second set of buttons. And that's pretty much it. Let's run that in. Uh, unfortunately, um, if there's no sound going through, you can create some DC um, doing this method. And something you could solve with a DC trap, I uh, maybe I'll cover one in the near future, but I don't really have time to go over it right now. Anyway, let's check out the uh, sound of our new bit crusher. Okay, so as you can hear, uh, this can just absolutely destroy a sound. Uh, I had to turn the audio down a bit on that last part just because it was a little too much. Um, so the last thing I'm going to do um, is just add a quick crossfader to this um, so we can switch between the dry and wet signals uh, very easily and maybe get a slightly less aggressive effect if that's what we're going for. Um, so nothing too fancy. Alright, 